we just water them. We killing them for freedom because they tortured us for boredom. The Lord will sort them. Um, so here's the thing. I hate the box. Maybe you've heard of the thing called the box. The box is where you think inside it, and then you live inside it, and then you know the box. So Kali, Kali, Kali Ma Shukti Day, doesn't think inside the box. In fact, they're more inside the sphere. These are the Kali INUNF for Ultra Near Field Monitor. That is a, that is a heavy sphere. And what this is designed to do, because you don't see it all right now, I right? see it's back there too. It's not a 2.1 like you'd get from, let's say, Edifier or Swan or any Eclipse. Or, this is specifically by a company. You, you should know Kali because um, the IN5s blew my mind that are like, top speaker, like one of the top speakers I've ever just hooked up and enjoyed. They're studio monitors. This is their solution. Kali is thinking way outside the box and not just with this, because I had to sit here and open up the page and I'm like, all right, Project Mammoth, what's this going to be? Is it a remote control? Does this speaker have outputs for a second thing and a digital input so you could hook it up to a game console? What, what's happening here? And then you go online and you find other things. Here's the INF, by the way, 600 bucks for what we're looking at. In case your budget's not high. Um, but here's the thing. This 2.1, which actually has, isn't really a 2.1 because that this driver, this, well, I'm going to pull it all apart and show you in a second. But this isn't just a subwoofer because it's firing out both sides, ported out one, contains all the amplification for everything, and then has very... Very, very strict rules as to where you can place it. Look, sad crying face emojis. And these pieces of paper here. You see these pieces of paper that come with the unit? They're to place on your desk to get the precise location of the satellite speakers. These are designed to be accurate studio monitors that work at 0.8 meters. Now, studio monitors are designed to work at arm's length. But most studio monitors, this big honking thing, you know, that sit up on there. The exception being something like the uh, iLoud MTMs, which by the way, more money for those individual monitors than for this setup with the massive honking base unit. Plus those are individual powered monitors. You still have to use uh, some sort of input source to control them. And although they have room correction, which is fucking awesome, they kind of lack low end, which is why underneath the desk here, in case you don't know my office setup, my office setup contains um, two iLoud MTMs and the SVS uh, Micro 3000 or 3000 Micro to get the low end. So, but with this, even if we good with that, fuck it, the Lord of Sodom. We, we okay, there's no need to add a $700 subwoofer to this. And honestly, the design of where we are is super unique. Now, this is one of the only spots in my house that has an actual desk which this makes sense on because if I was following the instructions it's like look this is okay you could have a desk in the middle of a room one meter from the wall you set it up I could actually do that I can accomplish that you could accomplish putting it against the wall you cannot f sit against the wall and face out to the room because it doesn't have anything to bounce against the corner like we see here is what I've got going on right now and if you look underneath, everyone has got a switch. If you know anything about Kali studio monitors, they're dedicated to like dip switches. So there's eight dip switches and every dip switch has a purpose. And in this particular scenario, I've got one of the dip switches up and the other dip switch up and everything else is down. But like sad face, super sad face if you put the sub under the table. It's not designed for that. It is not a subwoofer. This is all the mid bass and bass and sub bass to accommodate the, in case you didn't notice, by the way, when you looked at them, that's the coaxial from the IN5. They literally took this, the Kali IN5s, the full studio monitors, yanked the coaxial driver out of the top of it, stuck it in a sphere, which has no up or down, so it doesn't matter. They give you these amazingly thick, it's like, a silicone, a silicone ashtray, which the 
cube the sphere sits in, which by the way, you could turn around if you want it to be like super minimalist, you don't have to have the Kali logo. You could be super th that guy who just debadges his, you know, Range Rover, like no one knows it's a Range Rover. You plop this in here, you put this where it belongs, which I've been sort of just playing with the adjustment, because remember one thing people about speakers, adjustment is free. Placement is free. You, it doesn't cost you anything to move a speaker around. You could stack books, tin cans, and make your things correct. And you spend money on nice stands to make it look good. But just fucking around with where the placement is, and then shuffling all the music I can, I, I can do. I'm just sitting here on my laptop. Because this is, here's the thing. You know how these are hooked up to this laptop? Did you guess USB? You didn't, you should have. Because this unit has fiber optic input, USB input, TRS quarter inch input for balance, just to use like a regular studio monitor console, and a 3.5 millimeter input in case you just want to plug your iPod. I, iPad, iPod? Those were a thing, right? I haven't said the word iPod in so long, it just didn't come out of my brain. People still collect those. Those are the new vinyl now. Um, so I'm sitting here and just watching things and listening to things and going, could I master on this? No, I personally am not a mixing mastering engineer, but I kind of understand what they're looking for. And the answer is yes. In fact, these with that bass module can produce more low end by default than most studio monitors on stands. And every time people are like, I'm gonna master on a studio monitor, I usually tell them to get the biggest fucking ones they can fit. Because if you don't have the low end, you can't really assess the low end on a mix. So you gotta add a subwoofer. But these have a subwoofer, or at least the ability to create the low end that is needed. So if I'm, there's also a knob right here. Um, all right, we gotta look at the way this is built because it's just hilarious how good these are. And I love having my little corner office thing actually functional. So I think we'll finish the review here, right? Good. All right, let me tear this all apart against my will, and uh, we'll take a look. Message to Harry Man back from Tool. Big shout out to Grove Made for providing these stands months and months and months ago. Look how nice the wood is on this. The wood and the cork and the little metal shelf that it sits on. Ah, so there's a laptop stand from Grove Made. Not sponsoring this, but. Please, Grove Mate, send me more things. Okay, so let's look at the spheres first because they're an attached wire, which is fine because it's a sphere. Merp. Um, coaxial driver. Again, same exact thing that's going on with the tweeter there, mid range here. It is heavy. These have to weigh four and a half. Is that, is that a five pound bag of sugar? These might weigh five pounds, and that's all magnet there's no reason for them, to, for them to weigh it down. There's no top or bottom, which is nice because that would obsessively make me want to turn it if there was like a label and you don't have to worry. It's just whatever way it goes in, it goes in. Um, you could actually put it down. It does not affect the driver. You put it down like this. Like I said, there's these heavy bendy silicone like this is just the nicest thing ever. And it's so satisfying to like lock that in and just have it float. If, you, if you're aiming far down, you could see why they have the cutout with the Cali logo, like there. You could put these up on a stand if you wanted to get something just to raise it up because I'm using it on a laptop, which is usually down. You'd be looking down, you wanna focus down. That's fine. Um, it has an attached wire of roughly 1.1 meters, that's my measurement. Ending in banana plugs, which are actually really nice, little tiny little banana plugs, but there's heat shrink on them. Um, this is actually a very soft cable also. I gotta give them props for that. This feels like something you get at a nice headphone. It's a nice little soft cable. Um, so you get two of those, and then you have the base unit. We're gonna look, which is the least interesting side? I don't know. Well, here's the thing. This unit can either stand up like this, or, it has been designed. There's nothing on the back. Plenty of room for you to put waifus or a bumper sticker or something. But you can lay this down, I believe, like this. Yeah, because see this? These are silicone strips. These are rubberized strips. They were rubberized strips. They only start here. So you either stand it up and have these rubber bumps or this to lay it down on. Ugh. 
And then you know what you could do? You could take said laptop and instead of putting it on a stand, you could put it there, which also works, which is kind of fucking wild that they've given you a laptop lift slash subwoofer. I think that's a thing that's allowed. Let me see if it says no to do that. Does it say no? It says lay it down or stand it up. It doesn't say anything about me not putting my thing on there. Uh, yep, look, a monitor is good. Oh wait, it says laptop, no, bad fire. Uh, there's actually fire, they've, they've drawn fire, damn it. But you can put a screen on there. They're worried you're gonna melt your laptop because this is an amplifier and it's gonna get warm and this is gonna get warm. I think we could probably fix that with a little bit of creativity. What do you think? Anyway, so yeah, a monitor can go up there, but they don't want you to put your laptop on there. They want you to put your laptop in the front of it. And then you could stand it up against the wall, lay it down, put the laptop in front, put the laptop in front of it vertical like I just had it, or put it behind the monitor. That's another thing. You could put this whole unit, even if you're on a flat wall, it's so thin. It's only about five inches thick. Giggity. Um, battery is running low. Great. I have to charge my fucking thing. Um... All right, you know what? We're going to, give me a second. Well, apart from looking a little ridiculous, I did put a sound dry stand on this, which should satisfy all the needs not to have scary, oh my God, blew up, fire face. But yeah, you get at least six ways they tell you you can do it. And now I've just added a seventh way. Again, this is real high and the speakers would be a little bit lower, but you get to lay this unit down and that gives you a ton of placement options. So now that this is actually, being powered, because I don't know why the plug wasn't on it. Let's move this over. Excuse me. Uh, Keytron K6. Um, I bought this to act wirelessly in my vertical TV in the kitchen, and I hate it. But plugged and wired, it's actually pretty good. I, I will not give it any negative press plugged in, but fuck anything Bluetooth keyboard. So you got a nice little pattern in the back, because that's what you're gonna be looking at or not looking at. You stand it up. You get a lit Cali logo. This actually lights up blue when it's on and amber when it's in standby. We have looked nowhere. There's one of the drivers. It's like a little four inch. It's cute. On the top here, we get a, a sleep and wake button. If you wanted to sleep or wake the speakers, it will auto sleep by the way, which you can disable with one of the switches. You get your volume control, which actually does lock in at zero db i've actually had it a little blow and it can go up to plus six um it's not in a terrible spot if it's laying down you're gonna be able to have it at the bottom here if it's vertical you're gonna have it at the top uh i would probably still set this like you would a studio monitor and control via software either foobar's volume or windows volume um moving down from just the basic that and this you get your full-size power input and you get your satellite outputs, right sat and left sat, uh, positive and negatives. And these, I wish kind of, I kind of wish one was on the other side because you do have to run the wire from one around the unit, which takes away from a little, not like you need the placement because the units have to be within like a foot and a half, two feet of this, but it would be nice if it was on the other side. I love this stepped top. This thing is a nice chunk, by the way. And now here's the interesting side. So you get another one of those four inch drivers. You get a big oval port behind this grill. And here's your inputs. So TRS quarter inch for balanced. Your 3.5 unbalanced. Your USB-C, which is what I was using in an optical input. A studio monitor with an optical input. My God, think of the fucking possibilities. Anyway, here's a QR code which will actually give you the instructions in case you don't know what the dip switches do. One of the nicest uses of QR codes in the history of the world. Imagine you have like a thing and you don't know what the fuck the thing is, but there's a little QR code and you pull out your phone, which everyone's gonna have, hopefully by now, and you take a picture of it and it's like, oh, oh, that's what it does. Anyway, but I don't need to do that because I have paperwork, which I have saved. Here are the important safety instructions. And you have to keep these papers, because here's the thing. Base unit horizontal or vertical. If you vertical the, the unit, which would be like this, then for the left satellite, you would simply put it under here like that. And now you know exactly where you're supposed to have the left satellite puck specifically 
to put that there because they when you're dealing with ultra near field which is a new concept as far as i'm concerned you need to have very specific placement this is designed to make a lot of the base and the mid base and the low end to blend with this so you have to have this like very very accurate stuff going on and then i decided fuck that i'm just going to start moving it and honestly because rooms are different because i've got a solid wall here and a window there sometimes you just need to play around with it a little bit just don't go putting it i actually had this first set up in the basement with these on like like 10 feet apart as far as i can get them to go well it actually is impossible to get them 10 feet apart because of the length of the wire which is still long enough to get all the way around here and plug in with a foot and a half to spare 0.4 meters to spare. I'm trying to be good to my European followers too. Um, in fact, every follower that's not American. Um, so yeah, with the switches, let me go through the switches real quick. Because, so switch number eight literally determines if you want the light on the Cali logo to be on or off. So if you don't like the Cali logo lighting up, in fact, let's plug it in just so you can see that. I don't have to plug anything else in. Just, just you get in there power up there you go okay there if this bothers you which blue tends to bother me a little bit but it's such a subtle nice like it's just nice it's just nice so i would leave that alone especially if you, it indicates when it goes in standby it turns amber or orange so that's what switch number eight does on the side switch number seven determines if it goes off after 20 minutes if it auto standbys, it's going turning orange. If for some reason it takes too long and too many milliseconds to wake up, you just have it run all the time. It's a studio monitor. It's kind of designed to do that. And then you have switches four through six are all the different frequency changes. So again, for room correction purposes, if four, five, and six are all the way level, it's neutral. If you want to give a bass bump, you put four up. You want to put a mid-range bump of two decibels, which by the way, another thing that's very rare on most uh, studio monitors is a mid-range bump, but you can do that with five and then with six, you get a treble boost. And then obviously, if you put them all up, you get a low frequency boost of four decibels. I don't even fathom, maybe not in this scenario where the, it's corner loaded to begin with, but I think floating on a desk, maybe you'd need four decibels more bass and I don't know who the hell you are. And actually it's from 280 Hertz and down. So basically everything this unit's doing would just get bumped. And then six does a high frequency shelf above that or a low frequency down and mid range down. And then why would you do mid range down if you're a V shaped queen there? And that leaves switches one, two, and three. So switch one is if you're standing it up, one up. If you're slaying it down, one down. Again, I don't know. Cali is the magic of DSP switches. They're doing things and I tend to listen to them. Don't put it under the table. And then here's your different positions. So we were here. So I have switch three up and switch two down. If you put it in that sort of like alcove thing where you have walls on either side, switches two and three are up. I, I don't know what they do. Like I honestly don't know what this switch does, but it's doing something to the phase alignment which are the frequency range adjustment, so that it blends for all these different listening environments. And here's number five, it says pointed at your ear, which is actually harder than you think, because you're like, is that pointed at my ear? And you're gonna be like, oh, I sat back. Oh no, I'm shorter than that. So you're gonna be you're gonna be dicking with it a bit. If you have smaller hands than me, you may have a hard time, you might have to start doing the thumb press. It does slide very smoothly. It's like a, it's like a liquid ball. What are those things called? A uh, fluid head on a tripod. But the actual base doesn't move. It just, it just, it's nice. It's like an evil eye. I'm sure somebody out there is gonna go out and get those eyelashes you see on Mini Coopers and put the eyelashes on it because it'll be kind of cute. Um, but yeah, that's basically your switches, bitches. And here, this this QR code, which I think takes you to this this document is the same as the one on the side. So, this thing is, there's actually, they've got a new, so they got that new s speaker coming out that's gonna have digital inputs and be a studio monitor. Then they've got a little six inch sub coming out. They've got a one, they got a Project Watts, which is a thousand watt subwoofer that they haven't sent me yet. Um, they actually sponsored me to Munich. I'm pretty sure this video is coming out before I head to Munich at the end of May. Munich's a big high end show. 
It's actually called Munich High End. Uh, Callie has promised to send me three of their like most affordable sp bookshelf speakers or, or studio monitors to sell in the art sale to try to make money for to get me to Munich. So I want to thank them wholeheartedly. And don't worry, I'm not being biased about this. Go watch my all the Callie reviews from before Callie was even sending me shit. Are fucking adored. I adore these things. Th they do coaxials right, and they again fuck the box. Get the fuck out of the box. They are thinking so far out of the box with this. The fact that it even has a digital input is just like, what? What does that mean? How, how, oh, oh, because you're using DSPs to adjust it anyway, so why not take that? Let's set this back up. I'm gonna set it back up. You know what, we're gonna change locations. Just, just for you guys, so be right back. Yo, Can't play too much. But that is from uh, Zombieland Saga, which is an amazing show with just rapping zombie idols. Just just trust me on it. Anyway, welcome to my bedroom. Um, I've come to realize after purchasing this house that there is not many what people would call rooms that make any sort of sense according to this graph. Um, I also noticed that every one of these desks is slightly off-centered and I don't know why that is. And also the one of the big no-nos is probably the most common uh, set up, which would be like a computer desk in the corner. What they don't want is you having this driver hitting a wall and using it, and the other driver just free-flowing out into nothingness. They want you in the center or between where there's an even space. They also don't want it firing back. I actually thought about going outside and just setting up the desk and just having it that way, but it wouldn't work because that's a big no-no. That's a no-no to have it facing out into the middle of nothing. This is no-no. So I'd have to be facing the house and that would be stupid. Anyway, I also come to realize a couple other things. Um, I wanted to increase the base in here because it is getting a little bit more lost and in the corner. So I went to the full plus four and it sounded great. Problem being with this system, instead of using two knobs, where you could be like, I want more bass or I want more treble or I want less treble and more bass, a knob makes sense. With this setup, with the decoder setup, you're sort of stuck with these eight choices. And if your specific tuning doesn't line up with these eight choices, you're SOL, which means shit out of luck, by the way. So I put the bass tuning up, which is four, five, and six, all the way to the max, plus four, sounded great. It's what we're listening to. <laughs> well, what we, it's what I was listening to before I started this. I'm like, that's great. But you know what I've noticed in this room with the carpet and the high ceilings and I'm just, something about the treble is a little bit too hot. I want to lower the treble. Well, if I lower the treble, I got to bring the four down and that completely erases my bass adjustment. So I lose the bass. So I could either fix the treble or fix the bass, but I can't do both. So I split the difference and I went with a slight bass boost with four or five, six down. And that's sort of like, I feel like it leveled it a little bit, like the treble isn't as harsh, but it's not as fine tuned as it would be with just two knobs. Where it could be like, I need more bass and I need less treble. We don't have the option for that. We actually would need, I guess I could put the mid range up, but no, so that's gonna drop. The, no, see, it doesn't work 100% in everything. Um, took away the stand, they just got it sitting in front of this. Got them at perfect arm's length, plastic table. Uh, the, the succubus mouse desk pad if you want to get that. And I'm just here just shuffling through things. I should probably talk about how they sound because I'm I'm all about like, oh my God, this innovation and how they work and how they work and how they set up and how they're built. By the way, built like tanks. But the actual sound. The imaging is surprisingly amazing because like the rap song just now, there were two rappers going back and forth, and one of them wasn't in the left channel. He was here, which is the space between the left channel where that subwoofer or the sub module is outbreaking, and then the other guy was here. So the imaging is like, it's wild because usually you don't get imaging like in a small setup, like up speakers far away, you can sort of tell where it's sweeping. But these are like here. Like I'm just I'm not stretching my arms out at all, it's just here and I'm getting a clean signal of just like, it's here, it's here, it's here, now it's here, now it's all the way to the right and it's here again. And we're even getting a little bit, just a little tiny taste of like what the Broadmans do because we have side firing drivers here. So this is the room where I set it up to have the uh, the Broadmans where it was using the side wall to bounce and made the sound stage big. If I'm a little bit further back than I should be on my bouncy ball, 
because of course you need to stretch your back in the morning. It's like, oh God, it feels so good. I'm actually getting soundstage a little bit wider than the speaker. I'm hearing sounds come because it's shooting a lot of the low end. What was it, 280 hertz? 280 hertz is coming out of this. That's well up into the bass section. So I'm hearing it reflect off of things to the side and it's adding a space that you wouldn't normally associate with just a 2.1 because usually it would just be this and this and then low frequencies out of a sub. But since we have mid bass frequencies coming out of this, you're getting this width that you wouldn't normally get. And it's just, I mean, it should be delicate and it is delicate. It's one of the things about studio monitors. Speakers don't have to sound level and clean and neutral. Speakers just have to be good and fun. But this, if you're gonna use it for work, it has to be delicate. It has to deal with all the fine detail and has to deliver it to you. Otherwise, it's not a studio monitor. And these, even at this low volume, which I can easily, here's how you adjust it here, if we go down. If I crank that up, we just... And it is a digital knob because you could hear as you turn, you could hear the volume steps. It doesn't just come up. So everything in this unit is digital as far as the controls go, which is why using a digital input is probably going to be the way to go. You could, again, just fix it to zero, plug it in TRS and use your own, if you already have a um, uh, mixing console or any sort of interface that you like using, feel free to use it. The fact that this has fiber optic alone, I was even considering hooking up to my... Um, I've got the Amazon Echo thing that gives me fiber optic when I ask for Spotify to play, which is much better than trying to Bluetooth things. Just plug that into here. Plug your TV into here. Although you'd have to, it is specifically designed for this sort of distance. If you were to turn it up, By the way, Suicide Squad, the album, I think that's from the original Suicide Squad, the one that wasn't very good. Second one's way better. But this song, Skylar Gray, Wreck Havoc. Yeah, it's like the machine gun is out of phase and then focus and then out of phase. It's just, I'm pretty astonished at how good these are. Probably the best 2.1 you can buy for a desk, specifically for a desk. Those little swans I talked about, the M110s, those actually sounded better in a room when you put them as far apart as possible. And the subwoofer was just there to sort of like fill in. But this is way more precision. This is the precision that you're looking for. If you're like, I need a set of studio monitors, Zios, I have $500. Are you gonna be on a desk? Are you gonna be within arm's reach? Do you need it to be great here? Buy these. And look how much less space they take up. Yes, this is a monstrous box, but laptops exist, computer monitors exist. The fact that you could lay it down and use your computer monitor on top of it is like fucking game changer. Cause I haven't been able to figure out how to put a subwoofer under my monitor for a long while to the point where I, you just don't. I had a subwoofer behind my monitor for like the swans for years on my old apartment, but not like using the subwoofer as part of the structure of my desk. The only thing missing is it needs uh, a control here. If the control was here, which would make sense, like for volume, I'd be able to access it here or when it's laying down here. The fact that it's on the side is sort of neater, but it, it's, it's just, look, I'm just gonna praise the hell out of these. <laughs> That's another thing. It's like, oh, and the, um, I did notice something. So if I'm playing music and we are plugged in, hold on, I'm going to shut off. I literally powered off the sub with the main power breaker and it's still playing through USB, which means that the DAC internally is USB powered, which is fucking, thank God, because I've had so many units where if you kill power accidentally or that it's like oh broken whatever you're playing back is broken but this is still going so that DAC is being powered and run via the USB so it doesn't know that it's the speakers are not on so when you turn that on and off if you wanted to turn it on and off with a cast switch if you have a whole setup that you know when you turn off your shit at night it powers things down this won't break your driver connection if you're using USB I feel like optical is going to be more of a rarity especially if you're sort of confined to this sort of desk space. And if you're using the TRS, 
the, you know, the full balanced inputs, then, you know, Bob's your uncle, sky's the limit. But yeah, I could turn that off and on. It's just going to be playing. And then if I press the button on the back, you get the orange or the, I guess it's trying to be red, but it's not really. So hitting that is literally just an anal just a digital, it's basically a mute button that disables the amplification. Ah, uh, off, on, off. It's probably good in case you leave something open, you don't want to stop playing when you fucking leave the room. That's the Toonami Deep Space Bass album. If you can find it, I don't even know if it's on Spotify. Toonami, the Cartoon Network show, put out an album of just like drum and bass, and it is so fucking good. To this moment, all their bumper tracks and everything was just like, let's put on something else, hold on. Wait, let's break the entirety of this review, hold on. You know what? Having the two decibel bass bump is probably more accurate. The four was fun though. The four was like, well, the, the desk was physically shaking. Um, so yeah, I think I, I think this is the, the smallest set of speakers as far as like footprint that matters. Like you can get iLoud micros, little tiny ones, and put them there. They are not gonna have this level because that's a fucking five inch coaxial. This is about as small as you can make a big speaker and fit it on your desk. They just took the Cali IN5s and fucking brondles them into a, oh my God, it looks like the fucking suitcase from Made in Abyss. I am, uh, okay. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. But yeah, they basically taken the IN5s, uh, dismembered them and put them in a package that is so nice and clean and fits on your desk and le leaks goo. Oh God. Sometimes being an anime fan is not good. Not good for the brain. Like that, it's coming here. So I'm hearing the good treble is, it's literally an IN5 squeezed. So just go watch my review of the IN5s and imagine those on a desk, better suited for a desk than that with digital inputs. The only thing these are missing is remote control and some sort of switch to make them work for like room. Because right now they don't work for room. If you, you, you back up, it sort of sounds like... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you literally walk in. If I walk away and then walk in, you get into this like, there's like a bubble that forms here. It looks like this. And once your head has entered that bubble, Everything sounds right as rain. So thank you, Kali, for sending these. I actually had to steal one from the warehouse. These are selling out so fast. The guy at works at Kali that was like helping me out and has been talking about the sponsorship. He's like, I can't get you one. So what I did is I stole one from the thing personally and mailed it to you. Because the warehouse was like, no, we can't, we can't take the request. We can't, it's just, they're just keep selling them out. We don't have one. So we stole one. So I'm hoping to get everything else from Cali when I get it. I'm just gonna get the speakers to sell for the support for Munich. And I'm hoping to get that thousand, I, I can't wait. Cause here's the thing, I don't like studio monitors, subwoofers. Subwoofers that come with studio monitors are usually underpowered, underperforming, and they're overly expensive because it's like, ooh, look, we have the name brand of the speakers. So you wanna match it. And it's got XLR, it's this magical XLR, and there's nothing special about it. You're selling a thousand watt, I think 10 inch or 12 inch. It's either a 10 or a 12 inch. That's a serious subwoofer. I think that's what's needed. If you're gonna put it with the IN8s, the Cali IN8s are monsters. The only way to add sub bass to those is to literally develop a monstrous subwoofer. Maybe I can get them to send me two. Could you imagine that 2.1? Oh my fucking God. Rival things I heard at Exponent easily. These rival things I heard at Expona. And they're just 600 bucks and sitting on my desk. So thank you for stopping by. God. Lots of great coming out of here. Patreon subscribe star, support this channel. Um, check out my unboxing channel, which doesn't get enough love because these got unboxed. Probably haven't released that review yet. I'm still going through things, but everything that comes across this channel 
everything that I buy gets unboxed privately or on video, I should say, and then you can see it on the unboxing channel. So check out Patreon and subscribe so I support this channel, see reviews early, participate in yard sales. These will not be in the yard sale, but the other Callies will be in the yard sale. And uh, get to the sound demos. In fact, the Axpona footage, if you're looking for the footage from Axpona, um, you'll find a live stream on this channel where we dubbed it over because I couldn't play the music. If you are a $5 or higher patron, you get the unedited footage from Axpona. It's in the sound demo, uh, our Oasis. So you get to go and watch it with all my color commentary live, including what some motherfuckers were saying. It was not good. Anyway, that, that, that $10 tier gets you in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat. And once you're in that, you get into a lifetime swap me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear. And don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides, the forums, because Hi-Fi Guides, the site hasn't been updated in years pre-COVID because it was just like, no one wants this. Everyone wants the forums. And I wish I could make them both work, but it's a, it's an entire day job just to do that. But anyway, wallpaper, that's the girl from Girl in Panzer with the one eye. She's my favorite. I don't know even know her name, but she's my favorite. Um, available in the wallpaper hoard and desk mat and these, 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 these.